my guy, Mark. How are you doing, man? I'm good, S. How are you? Good, man. Good. It's it's good to be here in Ohio. Every time I think of Ohio, I kind of think of you, to be honest with you. But I also yeah. think of you when it comes to Indiana, uh, just because you have a relation to the Pacers. You've been following them for a really long time. I got to ask you, like, what, what got you into basketball first? Was it, you know, Cleveland or was it Indiana? What, what, what team? So it's funny. I was just in Indiana this last weekend, and honestly, uh, it's the same place. Uh, it's a little bit flatter in Indiana, but yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, so I didn't get into basketball until late, right? I right. was, uh, shoot, I think 2013 was the first time that I really like sat down to like care about basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, I started watching the Eastern Conference Finals in 2013, and so LeBron's already gone. Mm -hmm. um, playing in Miami, obviously. Yeah. And that's the Paul George. That is. That's here, the right? and that's the one before Roy Hibbert fell off, and right. like yeah. that was so that that year was like I'd always known about like dunks and like what offense can look like. But then I watched that team play defense, and I was just kind of hooked. And right. it was from there, I started off just kind of like casual with it, watching TNT games, and then um, I really like evolved into becoming like addicted to, to league pass and just yeah. watching basketball in general. But that's when it started for sure. Man, that's cool because yeah. that's a little bit later than I, what I would have expected, yeah. uh, especially because I think we're a similar age, right? Yeah, I just turned 25 in May. Yeah, so. yeah. So um, it's just it's cool to me because the amount that you've grown, and that's a credit to like your Shoot work that. process, what you've done, right? It's incredible. Like seriously, it's some incredible stuff. Um, I guess I should ask you is like, how did you get into writing? How did you go from being a fan and like doing, you know, just fan stuff, watching League Pass to, hey, maybe I should do this long term? Yeah. So it's funny. I told myself I was never going to be a sports writer. Um, I always had people tell me that I should be or that I'd be like really good on ESPN, like right, right, all right. that kind of shit. Right. And so I, uh, I mean, I tried to be a professional athlete first. Um, I got like really heavily involved with boxing when I was at, at Michigan State. And then, really? Yeah. Okay, that ended cool. up not working out. Um, had some health stuff pop up that okay. made it unfeasible. Um, were you were you any good? Like, did I you? I think I was going to be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. It, not you know. I think maybe that's more just like. Is there any Mark Schindler boxing clips? No, there's not clips, luckily. But okay. uh, yeah. I, they're vaulted, I think. But yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I ended up going from being in school, you know, working on that like religiously to yeah. being kind of confined to my couch for like a year and a half as I was recovering and, and you know kind of figuring out life stuff too, and. I, that's where I went from like just having basketball in the background and being something fun to where it was obviously still fun but like I went and I was like I'm watching games like you know three or four at night yeah. um, I'm really starting to like get into it obviously I'd always played 2k and loved 2k and, right you know just like the aesthetic of, of it obviously um, but that's when I really like started to like try and learn the game and understand mm -hmm. it more and that led to when I finally got back into school I took yeah I took like two years off of school I went back, I moved to Columbus, I bartended there, um, and just did like online classes, community college. And then when I moved to Toledo to go back to school at University right. of Toledo, right. that's where I, I kind of went. And I honestly, like, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I got there. Like, I knew that I loved basketball. I, I knew that I liked sports. I was thinking about getting into the medical field. Um, very glad I didn't, I'm so bad at science. Right. Um, but then I, uh, same by the way. So I just like took electives that year, right? I had, I like I had this idea. I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back into into the medical field because I was on that track was at Michigan State, and cool. I'm like, so I'm at Toledo, and just to get electives out of the way when I get there, there's a blogging 101 class, and I was like, well, that's probably simple. Um, did that, mm -hmm. ended up making it about basketball. That turned into premium hoops, which that was a thing for a while before everybody you know kind of graduated and moved on cool. to like bigger jobs in basketball. Right. And uh, yeah, that's how I started writing and started, started podcasting. And like, I think that was what, three, three and a half years ago. But now that I've gotten older and obviously, you know, like I've gotten to watch LeBron way more in depth. Yeah. Um, like I went to games all the time growing up as a kid when it was still Gund Arena, um, you know, when they still wore the sick blue alts. You yeah, know, man. Like the 06, 07 Cavs jerseys are one of the best all time. I, I, I love them. the, uh, there's an orange jersey that they yeah, have Yeah, the orange jerseys are like, I want to say it's 80s or 90s. I can't remember yeah, the top yeah. of my head, but yeah, those are cool too. But yeah, like those were awesome, five or six when LeBron gets drafted. And so I just had never known what the that was. was like, yeah, right I mean, man. like I understood that he was good. Like I went to Bobblehead night. Like I, you know, I'd, I'd been around, I'd seen it. I'd watched, I'd like seen games on TV and stuff. But yeah. like, I just, I don't think you can quantify what LeBron James means to basketball until you really get to zoom out and appreciate what it means when he's not here, you mm -hmm. know? Because like, I mean, again, like that's all I know. Like, so all I know was like, all right, they, I wasn't young enough to remember them being bad. Like yeah. they just make it 
They, they make the conference finals early on in his, his career. They make the finals. Obviously, that didn't go well, but, you know, like, but again, like that team. it was a huge team, moment, right? It was a huge moment. He was just obviously incredible. So I just, I didn't really appreciate or understand it until you get to see him demolish the Pacers <laughs> in 13, 14, and 2012, 2013. And, yeah. um, and then from there, just, like, seeing what his career is when he comes back, like, I think that's what really – made me stop and appreciate it more especially to like these last few years like i watch like i'll go back and watch a lot of historical stuff like yeah i went back you know a month ago and was watching his rookie year highlights and watching like going watching. watching full games too that are on youtube and it's like it's still just kind of jarring to go back and see it's wild to see how like i mean yes he's still an athletic freak right now but, but what he was doing i'll know like i honestly think to me and maybe this is just like, I, I think that we all have to acknowledge that there's, like, an inherent bias in the way that we watch and understand things yeah. just based on, like, when it was. So, like, 2013, 14 to me is, like, I don't want to say it's, like, one of the best years of my life, but that's right before I'm a, I think I'm a junior in high school, and that's, like, when I really start to fall in love with basketball. Obviously, like, the, the conference finals is happening, and yeah. um, to me, that is, like, the pinnacle LeBron was right. 2013, 14. Like, that year is just, I like, think that's a fair unreal. assessment. Yeah, because then watching them against the Spurs. Yeah. Um, and I mean, his what he was at that athletic peak in from 2012 to 2014, mm -hmm. like masked up LeBron wearing number six still, like that yeah. was that was unreal. Yeah. Do you feel because like you were there and you, you kind of started watching, but obviously you've lived in this town, you've lived in the area for a really long time. Do you feel like you've seen the impact of him leaving, him coming back, just in the community? What what kind of impact have you noticed specifically? Yeah, um, I think it was kind of crazy when, when he did leave at first. Uh, and I think it's always weird, too, because, like, I always look at it in, uh, in terms of, like, I mean, what was he, 25, 26 when he left yeah. Cleveland? So I know, like, there's a lot of hubbub about how he left, and I get it, especially going back and watching. But, like, I remember, like, I had multiple friends who, like, burned jerseys. <laughs> um, people just, like, completely denounced him and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like, people yeah. rooted against the, the, the Heat extensively and then on the other side there were people who were like well i'm just a lebron fan so they got yeah. heat jerseys they like got fully in on the heels and that bandwagon um and then of course there's me who just became a pacers fan right. and um yeah so i think that was that was interesting to see just because that's when i start to, it starts to click for me I'm like oh wow this is different um and when he comes back the second time do you feel like there was like, what was the feeling in the city at that point? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. I think, like, to before we even get to there, like, I think you look at in between. Like, I went to a game. I think this was the first game where I was, like, a big fan of basketball. basketball. And I go to a game. I want to say I'm actually pretty sure that it was Raptors-Cavs. Okay. Um, and the Cavs had, shoot, two or three guys out. But, like, so the, the, the starting lineup that game was Spencer Hawes, Luol Deng, uh, Jared oh, Jack, Dion Waiters, Kyrie was out that game, yeah. and I'm pretty sure Alonzo G started as small forward. <laughs> so it's like they get demolished by yeah. the Raptors wearing those absolutely rancid jerseys Awful. from before yeah. they you know transitioned to the Wheeling yeah. North jerseys. Yeah, and uh, which also aren't that great, but yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I like the Wheeling. North I get it. Jerseys, I get but it. Like, I get yeah, it. I get it. but like looking at that year, so I sit like 15 rows up that game. Just me and a couple friends go. I think we got those seats for like forty bucks a seat. And this was the year right before. Yeah. LeBron so this is like game, right? yeah. Um, 2015? Twenty fifteen. Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 2013, 2014. 2014. 2014, Yeah. And uh, so that year, yeah, forty bucks. And then I check next year what those same seats are, and it's like you know, like half a grand to sit there. What? Yeah. Like I remember. So half the. A grand, that's so nice. yeah, I remember I was on a, I was on a bus ride back. I don't remember where I was coming from. But I just remember the announcement that LeBron was coming back. It happens middle of the day. Yeah. And I'm coming home. Within, right? yeah. I think within like three or four hours of season tickets opening up, it sold out. Like wow. just completely bought out. Yeah. So like even just like the the brand recognition and the name, like that automatically totally changed. Yeah. Like from and that I mean because that's what was different to me because like I went from you know most of my formative years like middle school and high school. He's not in Cleveland, yeah. and uh, then when that happens and he comes back, you kind of see like how crazy it is. Like I, I'll never forget. I actually was downtown when they put the uh, they put the you know oh, LeBron standing up, and when back. they put it back up, yeah. and uh, that was kind of wild to see that unveiled. And like that, I mean, that was a staple in Cleveland for a couple yeah. of years when he was here. So it's always Absolutely. weird whenever you drive by and it's not there. Um, but yeah, just seeing like how everything changed and people got back into the Cavs after right. that was was pretty astounding because I think. So much gets lost. Like that era of Cavs basketball was terrible. 
Um, oh, and man. I don't mean that. Like, obviously, Kyrie, incredible talent. Yeah. Um, Dion, like, I think people for people forget. People Jeez. forget. But Dion people was do a forget. Book. Like <laughs> the first two years of Dion Waiters, I thought he was gonna be. Like, it was fun. I was man. like, he's gonna be better than yeah. Dwayne Wade. Like, yeah, you know, obviously yeah. not true. But like, when you see it in the moment, you're a kid. You think that. Well, what was he? Um, he's like third overall pick. Fourth yeah, overall I think pick? it was it was second or third. I can't yeah. remember. But yeah. he was like, I think he he almost averaged like 20 points per game yeah. his rookie and sophomore year. And uh, so, like, you think that there's going to be something there. Obviously, that flames out. doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, and they, that's without mentioning, like, just the swath of draft picks didn't work. Like, like the we Anthony Bennett. We can talk Bennis, about him. Yeah. We can talk about him. Yeah, I know the, you. Yeah, yeah. The Anthony Bennett stuff is, like, like, I'm not a Cavs fan, so it doesn't, like, hurt me to talk yeah. about. Like, the, yeah. the Anthony Bennett thing, I remember that was, like, the low point mm-hmm. in Cavs basketball. <laughs> like, I think, and what's so incredible looking back is that that's the year before LeBron comes back because right. yeah. he's drafted in 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, uh, well, I mean, between or, I that guess and Wiggins, like drafting Wiggins and he, like people forget, people forget, but like the hype around Wiggins was insane. Yeah. The draft, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes it interesting too, because David Blatt was hired to come in and coach the young Cavs. Yeah. Like he was come, he was hired to come in and be a developmental coach, uh, bring, bring along Anthony Bennett, bring along Andrew Wiggins. Like, everything was about, like, building around Andrew Wiggins and, yeah. and Kyrie and what that was going to be, um, which is funny to think about what that could have been or, or not been, you know, mm-hmm. in retrospect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you look at how that just flips right. in a year. It was pretty pretty remarkable. So let's let's switch it up to this Cavs team, this yeah. current iteration, what they've built over these last couple of years with Darius Garland. First it was Colin Sexton, but now they've they've kind of revamped Donovan Mitchell obviously being the big piece here, but there's a lot to it. Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, even the the core guys that they have, really, really fun, right? It's a fun team that they're building around. Yeah. I guess my my take or what would you say is how they've built this team without a guy like LeBron and how that kind of looks towards what the city is doing as well. And this whole, like, the land revampment, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they've, they've kind of revamped it to, what, the kingdom, right, with, with LeBron and, and the Cavs, and now it's the land, this community aspect of it. Do you feel that that kind of resonates with, with the team as well? Yeah, I think so. It's interesting because I, when, you know, when things first started up with Kobe Altman at yep. the end of LeBron's tenure, when you knew it was, like, kind of hitting its end, because I want to say he was, yeah, so he was here for LeBron's last year, so then... I mean, that's when the trade happens where they literally just move half the roster at the yeah. deadline. Like, I'll never forget. That was that was wild yeah. seeing that happen in real time. So I think both trades happen within two hours of each other. Um, and even then, like, you looked at it and, you know, you could get excited but also be like, they still have to play the Warriors. Right. Uh, that did not go well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when LeBron leaves and you see the way that everything's playing out the second time, and that again, like another low point, because I think you look at it and you're like, "How is this gonna, it's gonna work?" Like, gonna I think Colin out. Sexton was exciting, but um, never forget when Colin Sexton made his pitch to LeBron as a rookie who had not played yet, um, <laughs> that he should come back and play with him. Uh, love Colin, but like, yeah, yeah I, I think you look at the way things started to play out. Like Tristan Thompson, like really regressed, yeah. dealt with injuries. To be fair, too, it was like in a really weird state with where, like that. It started to nose that quickly, right? Um, so I think what made it so exciting about how things looked like, again, with, with Darius, like Darius is coming off of that massive knee injury mm-hmm. when he was playing at Vanderbilt. Um, I think that they're like, people understood why he was the draft pick, um, yeah. but also they were like, you know, Colin Sexton's already here. Why are you taking another small guard? Right. And that first year, it did not look good. Not at all. One um, of the worst like, defensive teams ever. Yeah. yeah. That, I think it was the second worst because it was behind the Wizards team the year before. <laughs> um, shout out to that. But like, you look at it and it's like, okay, I, where is this going? Can this really, you know, I think Colin was somebody to be really excited about, but yeah. also again, it's always like, you know, to what level? Darius, I was just, I don't want to say I was out on him by any stretch, but like he like athletically looked very slow his first right. year. The burst wasn't there. He really struggled to get to the rim and he's still not great at getting to the rim. Awesome getting to the paint and all that. But, um, you know, you look at that, that year and you're just kind of like, what is the inflection point here? How is this changing? And then obviously the next year, they had that real people again. Like, I think that was the first moment where you started to see this team might be something because yeah. um, it's excellent. The first, right? yes, yeah, so excellent. And the first first twenty games, I think they started off like nine and uh, nine and eleven or like ten and ten. Yeah. They beat the Nets on. A, I don't think it was a TNT game. It might but have it been. It was a, a crazy game. game. It was an absolutely crazy game because yeah. that's like the Nets. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. the first 
because KD is healthy that year, if yep. I remember, like he's getting healthy that year. Or actually, KD might not have been out. Might might have been out that year. Um, but regardless, like this is it's still Kyrie, Jared Allen, like yep. this whole team is like together. Like they're this is the Nets yep. trying to be a competitive team, and so that Cavs team starts really well. Andre Andre Drummond is like really freaking good that yep. at yeah. that time, and then they make the Jared Allen trade, and it's not like it's Jared Allen's fault, but then Andre just stopped playing Stop. hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. It really fell apart things didn't look good um and that again you see the nosedive that year but you still see like reason for excitement um and the way that everything's playing out and then that next year is again where you just see like oh okay like this is this is going somewhere Mm -hmm. um and i think with how everything's culminated into this year the way that they've continued to build through the draft and just like some good signings um and obviously internal development like i think there were real questions with what level of coach J.B. Bickerstaff was going to be based on his time in Memphis, yeah. um, and then how things started in Cleveland. And I think he's been fantastic, obviously. Like, he's really done things to build out a, a funky roster, I think is the best way to put it. Um, like, obviously, a lot gets made of the ro- the, the Raptors and how funky their roster is, which, right. understandably, but, like, but the Cavs, the Cavs are in a different Equally, mode. equally yeah. funky, yeah. if you think of, a, like, the Lowry Markkinen, Mobley, yeah. Jared yeah. Allen front court that they were throwing out there. I think one of the more interesting things about the Cavs and like how they built this quote unquote culture is the fact that their culture was for a very long time, for as long as I've I've watched basketball, it was LeBron. It was LeBron or nothing, right? Yeah. And now they're trying to build that culture without a guy like him. Do you feel like that will be a, or do do you feel like what they're building right now is something that can be sustainable? You know, a, a culture, if you will. I know culture is kind of like an overplayed word, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's definitely an overplayed word, but I, I get what you're saying, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, I oh, yes. didn't even realize. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Forgot about that. Yeah. Cool. We got our food. Right. Yeah. Folks, if you are watching this video, subscribe to the SDPN channel because it's dope, first and foremost. And number two, you get to watch more videos like this. So, subscribe. See you later.